lived among, traded with, married, and adopted the techniques and skills and customs of the French, uh, of the natives rather. And so they became almost natives themselves. And that was one of the reasons why the French had a greater number of natives fighting with them because instead of like the British, the British came to North America and settled and started taking land. So it didn't take long before the natives figured out, these British are taking our land. So why should we help them? Where the French were more interested in trading and also getting furs. So they didn't displace the natives like the British did. So the French were always able to get more natives, both by being more culturally aware of the native customs and cultures, but also because they weren't taking their land. The British, the best they could hope for was to keep the powerful Iroquois nation up along the Mohawk River in New York neutral. Just don't let them fight against us, we'll keep them neutral. But the British did have, particularly the Mohawks, uh, along the Albany uh, Mohawk River area, uh, did fight for the uh, British I go back the Allied with the French have attacked from the riverside. Down in the tree line, the British have to respond. The British that are on the field now, those are rangers. There's Danks Rangers, which operated up in Nova Scotia area, up in New Brunswick. And also Rogers Rangers, which operated here in New Hampshire by the famous Park Sun Ranger, uh, Robert Rogers, who was from New Hampshire. Again, you see natives are staying into the tree line out of cover. They're moving from tree to tree. They're not exposing themselves any more than they can. The rangers are trying to kneel down and make themselves as small a target as they can. Now the British are bringing up more reinforcements to help them. These are Connecticut provincials. Again, they're from the colony of Connecticut. They were raised by the colony of Connecticut basically from May to November. At that time they would go back to their home. So these were people who lived in the colony and fought. The British are advancing more troops. The troops coming on to your right now in the green are New York provincials from the colony of New York. One thing you'll notice right away is in both armies there are multiple uniforms. And that is one of the distinctions they have between their different companies and regiments is the colors of their coats Damn. and <laughs> their lapels on their coats, they're cuffs in their lapels. Now you'll notice the natives are moving around quickly, scurrying in what we call the Skokie War, where the British, even though they're rangers and they're adapted into that kind of fighting, are protecting their column by fighting in a linear form. And you will notice that some of these weapons will misfire, which was normal in the 18th century. Now the British are firing round best muskets, which are 75 caliber, or the size of a quarter. So they've got a lead ball coming out of the barrel about the size of a quarter. The French are firing 69 caliber, and that's just slightly smaller. Now, you would get hit with that, it would do some damage to you, but you probably would not die. More casualties would take place weeks later from what today we would think of as a minor wound because of infection. Gangrene would set in, they would have to amputate your arm or your leg, or you would die. And so, after battles, the wounded were not off the hook. Even though they might have been minor wounds, uh, by our standards today, infection and caring for infection was a risky business. In actuality, throughout the French Indian War and the Revolutionary War, which followed it, the casualty rate was small from actual combat, but disease, 
such as smallpox, dysentery, things of that nature, killed more soldiers than did actual bullets from the enemy.
This column has been completely surrounded by this French ambush. And again, the distance you're seeing for the battle, this is how close it was.
and movies, we don't understand why they're marching so slowly. But this is how they fought the battles in the 18th century. And again, we only have several hundred reenactors. Imagine what it would be like on a battlefield of Europe when there were 30 or 40,000 men. During this time frame, and the French and Indian War took place between 1755 and 1763, at the Battle of Ticonderoga over in New York, the British had 16,000 men, the French had 4,000 men, and the French were able to win. Better get a match for that. Senior NCO in charge. 
clothes. They're wealthy. They have to buy their own clothes. The army doesn't buy it for them. So the ones in the brighter, good-looking uniforms are the officers. 